Denny Hamlin putting off getting shoulder surgery back in 2022 might have cost him two NASCAR championships. Hamlin got hurt during the playoffs in 2023, and he could miss the start of the 2024 NASCAR season because of it. How bad is Denny hurt? How much pain was he in during the 2023 playoffs? When do doctors think he'll be back in the car? And who will be in the 11 car in 2024 in the meantime? Let's break it all down today on Shifting Gears. I'm Alan Bailey, and before Denny tries to keep up with MJ again, make sure that you mash that subscribe button so that you do not miss a video. And now you can help support the channel by becoming a channel member to get exclusive early access to content here on the channel and getting a voice in our Discord server to decide what videos get made next. And you can log on to AmericanRacingNetwork.com for the latest motorsports news. ARN, the Motorsports Authority. Denny, what'd you do? Uh, uh. Now, if you've missed the headlines with Denny Hamlin over the course of the last couple of weeks, don't worry. That's exactly what Joe Gibbs Racing and Denny Hamlin wanted you to do. So let's catch you up. The 43-year-old NASCAR driver had a soft brace on his right arm over this last week out in Nashville for the championship celebration. He had surgery on his right shoulder on Thursday, November 22nd, 10 full days after the season ended. Why did he wait 10 full days after the 2023 season ended to have this surgery? He knew it needed to happen even in 2022, and he kept putting it off, putting it off, putting it off, putting it off. And then finally, 10 days after the checkered flag flew, he decided, eh, you know what? Now might be a good time to get this done. Even though he knew it was a massive problem throughout the entire playoffs, or at least for the last five races of the 2023 playoffs. So... What's the deal? The surgery was to repair a lingering rotator cuff injury that apparently was exacerbated right before the Las Vegas playoff race back on October 15th. How did he get this? Playing sports, something that Denny Hamlin proudly does, and unfortunately, it cost him again, just like it has in the past. Now, he didn't disclose this injury publicly because apparently he didn't want people to say, that's why he didn't do good in the playoffs. But guess what? He didn't do good during the playoffs. Not really. Ever since essentially this injury happened right in the middle of the playoffs, throughout the latter half of the playoffs, he didn't perform, didn't make the final four, didn't win the championship again. And yeah, some of that is mechanical issues, but even Denny admitted that when he was in the car for the last five races of 2023, he was struggling to reach up there and hit buttons and do things in the car. So that really, really, really affected him and guaranteed it affected his on-track performance. I think even he would admit that. When the surgery happened, everybody kind of went, well, he needed to have it done. Good thing he had it done. But then when we saw him this week out in Nashville, everybody kind of went, is it bad? And Denny confirmed it's pretty bad because post-surgery, it's extremely more painful than they anticipated. And surgeons have recommended three full months of recovery time of rest and rehabilitation before he returns back to racing and before he returns back to sports. That's 90 days. And just in case you're wondering, this race, the Bushlight Clash, is happening on February 4th, which is a little over 60 days from now. Meaning, Denny Hamlin will more than likely miss the LA Clash and the 2024 Daytona 500 if he needs the full 90 days to recover. And I'm sure he could do the Chase Elliott thing and kind of rush through his recovery process and jump right back into that car. It worked out so well for Chase Elliott in 2023. He won driver fan of vote of the year. Isn't that great? That's pretty much the only thing Denny Hamlin can look forward to if he rushes back. I hope he takes his time. I hope he gets it right. Because this has been a problem for him for years, decades at this point, and it's going to continue to be a problem for him moving forward. He's only 43 years old, and I'm thinking once he's in his 60s and 70s, he's going to want to maybe pick up his grandkids and maybe go to the racetrack and high-five people when they win a championship with 2311. See how I'm being optimistic, Denny? This entire thing is extremely familiar because of Chase Elliott. It's the exact same thing that happened with Chase Elliott earlier in 2023. Chase Elliott heard himself playing a sport that was non-racing related during the middle of the NASCAR season. But for Chase Elliott, it literally happened three races into the season. With Denny Hamlin, it happened with five races to go. And that's the biggest thing. But 
Denny himself, when Chase Elliott was hurt earlier this season, talked about it on his podcast, what drivers can and cannot do in order to unwind away from the race car. I would think that most people do things physically because it helps them mentally. And I, I know that that's the case for myself. I play golf and basketball and pickleball and other sports because mentally I cannot be consumed with racing but for so much. I right. have to unwind from that. And that is my way to still be competitive, but yet get racing off the plate for a little while. You know, I'm so busy with running the race team and and working on the competition side of that and the business side of that. I've got a, my 11 team that I'm focused on for at least three to four days a week. You know, it's just, I have to get away from it. I, I just can't you know, focus. And, and some people love racing seven days a week. I'm never going to be that person. Look, I, I think Denny Hamlin is a great driver. Obviously, he is a future Hall of Famer. There is no questioning that. Multiple Daytona 500s, tons of race wins, a very impressive career on paper. No, he does not have that championship. But now as a NASCAR owner, I think he's definitely cementing himself into that Hall of Fame discussion, hands down, period. But he will never win a title. He just doesn't want it bad enough. That's not really a criticism. That's just a fact at this point. He himself just admitted it right there. That he can't be that guy that lives, eats, breathes this stuff. He needs to get away from racing. He's very passionate about motorsports, but you talk about a Kyle Larson. You talk about a Tony Stewart. These guys are extraordinarily passionate. They are champions in NASCAR and, in Tony Stewart's case, other forms of racing. And Danny Hamlin will never be on that same level, unfortunately. And maybe that's a good thing. Maybe that's a bad thing. I don't know. The jury's out. Even Denny Hamlin admitted when he had his best chance to win a championship, when he was trying to hyper-focus and beat Jimmy Johnson out at Homestead to win a NASCAR Cup Series championship, he choked it away. And he talked about why he needs to get away from racing in order to focus on racing. I found in 2010 when I basically choked the 2010 championship away because we I was you know too focused on you know hey make sure I do everything perfect and right instead of just enjoying it and having fun basically I, I learned in 2011 like I just went away that off season and I went to Phoenix for the entire off season I was like man this is so much better to get not consume myself with so much racing and I, I just from that point on I figured out that I, I came up with a kind of a schedule and com can compartmentalize my life to say this section is for racing this section is for rate or for family and this section is for having fun and that's that's kind of what makes me tick. It's not a bad thing to need and want to get away from the racetrack and get away from racing in order to recharge your batteries. You're living your life. Everybody should live their life. Yes, you have some guys like a Bill Belichick type or even a Tony Stewart, Kyle Larson type or even a Kyle Busch type that are super, super hyper focused on one thing, one singular goal. And that can sometimes be a good thing, but maybe that's not really the best thing to do sometimes. Denny Hamlin doesn't fall into this camp. He's the guy who lives his life outside the racetrack and honestly, bless him for it. Go live your life, Denny, sincerely. To me, I would rather see him live his life and be a happy, healthy individual with a lot of race wins than an extremely unhealthy person who has a NASCAR championship. Denny Hamlin is still a NASCAR Hall of Famer, period. Whether or not he gets a championship as a driver or as an owner somewhere down the road, it doesn't matter. And remember, a couple of extraordinarily famous championship winning race car drivers once said, It's just an empty cup. But listen, Denny Hamlin doesn't exactly have the best track record with his health. And he does tend to get hurt a lot, and that's not really a great thing. And I've blown two ACLs. 2010, I blew my left ACL. 2014, I blew my right. Uh, I had shoulder surgery two years ago on my left. I need to get my right done. Uh, I should have done it this offseason, but I didn't want to be in a sling for weeks. But it's, it's nagging me enough now where I need to get it worked on. Uh, so this offseason, so essentially two so, knees, both shoulders, like 
you know, now some of this is hereditary. The shoulder thing is hereditary. I can thank my parents for that. My, my basically, whatever bone is up here at the top of my shoulder is growing into my rotator cuff, which is they just got to basically cut off the edge of that bone right yeah. there and, and, and relieve the pain. But the knees came from basketball. Genetics. I, I, obviously, I'm not a fan of genetics. I mean, Denny Hamlin isn't either. I, that sucks. Like, I hate it for Denny. I hate it for anybody who has that medical condition. But Denny just talked about it right there in that clip from earlier this season. He's a guy who's been dealing with shoulder issues throughout his entire life, and it sounds like he's going to be dealing with them even further down the road in his life. And that sucks. Like, there's no way around it. Is this ultimately what's costing him the championship? Maybe. Playing sports in the middle of the season didn't necessarily help, but should drivers be allowed to play extreme sports or even any form of sports outside of racing during the season? I think that, you know, we have to let these drivers do what they need to do to be mentally in this game because it is tough. You know, we, you travel it. We all travel this circus every single weekend, and it's tough. The grind is hard. And it now, it used to be harder. Yeah, like we used to have to go for four days a week, right? Um, but it's still a grind, especially for these team guys. Um, man. Denny is 100% right. Drivers need to relax and recharge outside of racing. You cannot just work, 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 work at the end of the day. You need to actually put a little bit of life in there sometimes. And yeah, it kind of sucks. We, as a society, work five days a week and get two days off. These NASCAR drivers kind of have that flipped. They work two days a week and they get five days off. And yeah, there are a lot of sponsor commitments, meetings, training sims, working in the shop, working out, pit crew practice, you name it, that happens during the week. And yeah, it'd be nice if NASCAR threw in some actual practice time at the racetrack at some point. It'd be kind of nice. I'm just saying NASCAR. But personally, at the end of 2023, I actually went to two of the last four playoff races in 2023. And honestly, it took me weeks to feel normal after being on that grind, traveling and being at the racetrack for 12, 14 hours a day in the hot sun outside, carrying equipment on my back, running around, trying to get the story, putting the story together, editing it, posting it, writing, 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 putting it all up, travel. Ugh. On top of everyday life, it just kind of wore me down personally. I honestly feel for anybody who is part of the traveling circus that is NASCAR. It is a wonderful sport, but 38 weekends a year, it wears you down. Like, I needed weeks to get right, and I'm still grinding away during the offseason. But it begs the question, who could jump into the 11 car if Denny Hamlin isn't ready for the LA Clash or the 2024 Daytona 500. There are some options. Let's talk about who are not good options for 2024 for the 11 car. Sammy Smith was in the Toyota pipeline. He moves over to Junior Motorsports in 2024, so he's out. John Hunter Nemechek was in Joe Gibbs Racing's number 20 car last season in the Xfinity Series. He jumps up to the Cup Series, so he's not an option. Now, Sheldon Creed is rumored to be going to Joe Gibbs Racing's Xfinity program in 2024, but nothing has been signed, nothing has been announced, so that's a potential possibility. Trevor Bain was in a Joe Gibbs Racing Xfinity Toyota for a few races in 2023. That could potentially be an option. Ryan Truex was also in a Joe Gibbs Racing Xfinity Toyota in 2023, and there's a cool side story there because this potentially could be Martin Truex Jr.'s last Daytona 500, meaning we could get both Truex brothers in Joe Gibbs Racing Toyotas in the Daytona 500. That'd be pretty cool. Like, that's a pretty cool way for Martin Truex Jr. to go out with his brother, little brother here in the 500. I'm just saying. Um, another option from the Truck Series is Corey Heim period. Uh, everybody else from the truck series in the Toyota pipeline, I don't think that they would really consider. I think Corey Heim would be up on deck before anybody else in the truck series. So it's just kind of a murky situation. Um, honestly, I think it's a 50-50 split between Trevor Bain and Ryan Truex. And that's assuming that either one of those drivers is back in the Joe Gibbs Racing Toyota fold in 2024. And we still don't know. That program over there at Joe Gibbs Racing is still heavily under negotiation with a lot of drivers and sponsor dollars still moving around, still trying to figure out how many cars, 
um, what the crew chief situation will be and what the driver situation will be as far as full-time, part-time. So we don't really know over there. That's a massive part of silly season in the Xfinity series that has yet to be named as of the recording of this video. And to be clear, this is all speculatory. Denny Hamlin could 100% be recovered within two months and he's back for the clash and this is all a moot point. Or he could be down for the clash and the 500. And you really have to ask yourself, if I'm just getting off of recovering from a shoulder injury, do I want to go to a short track that's known for taking hard hits and beating and banging in a car that doesn't really have a great track record with driver safety? On the flip side of that, do I want to go to the Daytona 500, a super speedway known for big wrecks and risk a shoulder injury? Yeah, Denny Hamlin doesn't really have a whole lot of great options here. I wish him all the best to him and his family throughout the entire offseason. I wish him a very speedy recovery. Full recovery, Denny. Full recovery, bud. You got this. Keep it going. You got this. Seriously, it's going to be a rough offseason for Denny Hamlin and Denny Hamlin fans. But I want to keep this debate going. What do you think? Will Denny Hamlin be back for the LA Clash or the 2024 Daytona 500? If not, who will be in the 11 car? Let me know in the comments down below. And while you're there, make sure that you mash that subscribe button so that you do not miss a video. And now <laughs> you can become a channel member and help support the channel even more by getting early access to videos here on the channel and also getting a voice in our Discord server so that you can help dictate what content gets made here on the channel. And you can log on to AmericanRacingNetwork.com for the latest motorsports news. ARN, the Motorsports Authority. I want to thank you so much for watching all the way to the end. For Shifting Gears, I'm Alan Bailey. We'll see you at the track.